Assalamu alaikum I am Asma Mushtaq from the Double Vibes and in this video lecture we are going to study about the convergence criteria of the Gauss-Seidel method and for the better understanding I have considered a system of the linear equations where only the two variables are involved all right so as per the Gauss-Seidel method what we do uh, from the first equation we represent x1 in terms of the rest of the variable so x1 will be equal to 286 minus 13x2 divided by 11 and from the second equation we will drive the value of the second variable which is x2 in this case and will represent rest of the terms uh, in this expression so x2 is equal to if i take 9 minus 9x2 on right hand side so it will become 11x1 minus 99 and then divided by 9 so this is the representation of the variables x1 and x2 in terms of the rest of the terms in the expression all right but before that let's just solve the system of the linear equations as we know that we are having a system which consists of only two equations and two variables so we can solve it directly so we can also find the direct solution the purpose of finding the di direct solution is that we will be just verifying the resultant so these two coefficients were equal so i have just subtract, uh, subtracted these two equations 13 plus 9 is equal to 22 so it becomes 22x2 it's equal to 286 minus 99 which becomes 187 fine so x2 is equal to 187 divided by 22 which is equal to 8.5 in this case now as we have the value of the x2 we can substitute it in this expression and from here we can write the value of x1 okay so x1 will be equal to 286 minus 13 times of 8.5 divided by 11 okay so multiply it with 13 then 286 minus this term divided by 11 will result in x1 equal to 15.95. So this is actually the actual solution of the system x1 and x2 that I have determined by using the or by solving the equations directly. Okay, so x1 is equal to 15.95 while x2 is equal to 8.5. So this is the actual solution now. Let's apply the Gauss-Seidel method. In the first iteration, what we do as it's the iterative method, we choose the initial guess. So we will choose x2 initially equal to 0. And from here, x1 will be equal to 286 divided by 11. So this is equal to 26. Fine. And once you have determined the uh, value of x1 this updated value of x1 will be used for determining the very value of x2 so the first iterative value of x2 is equal to 11 times of 20 so 286 divided by 11 is actually equal to 26 it's not 286 it's 26 now what we will do we will substitute the value of 26 minus 91 all divided by 9 so first approximation gives us the value of x2 equal to 20.7 all right now let's perform the second iteration according to which x1 of 2 will be equal to 286 minus 13 times of x2 which is recently determined value 20.7 whole divided by 11 so in the second iteration we go to know x1 is equal to 1.53 while x2 of the second iteration will be equal to 11 times of 1.536 let's perform the calculation till three decimal places then minus 99 divided by 9 so x2 came out to be minus 9.1 one two two as you can clearly see 
in the first iteration we got the value of x1 equal to 26 while in the second iteration the value of x1 is equal to 1.53 which is very very small and there is a huge difference let's determine the percentage relative error in the value of x1 so it can be determined from the recently determined value minus the value of x1 in the previous iteration divided by the newly updated value of x1 and then multiply it by 100 so if you notice then the error is equal to 1592 percent which is very huge error in this case and also if you compare the first uh, iteration values with the actual value of the solution then they are relatively close although the value of x2 has been drastically changed similarly the next updated value of x1 is quite quite far away and there is a huge difference between the actual value and the approximated value in x1 and x2 case all right so why this is happening there is a relative criteria which says that in order to apply the Gauss-Seidel method and in order to make sure that the Gauss-Seidel method will converge is you have to make sure that the system is diagonally dominant so what is meant by the diagonally dominant it means that the absolute value of the diagonal entries like a11 a22 up to so on a n n these uh, the absolute values of the diagonal entries must be greater than for the rest of the diagonal entries okay so what does it mean that so a i j where i is equal to j should be greater than for the absolute values of the diagonal entries where i is not equal to j okay so assuming that if i write this system of linear equations in the form of a matrix so it would have become 11 13 11 and minus 9 so this is the diagonal entry and its magnitude is 11 while the off diagonal entry is 13 so the diagonal entry is not greater than the absolute value of the off diagonal entry same is the case over here in this case the absolute value of the diagonal entry is 9 while the off diagonal entry is 11 so it's actually not diagonally dominant system that's why you can clearly see here the method is not converging so let's just justify why the Gauss-Seidel method is not converging in this particular case as we said that the system uh, this method actually converges only when the system is diagonally dominant so far what we did we determined the value of x2 by uh, from the equation v by substituting the value of x1 is equal to 0 so what we did we actually put x1 is equal to 0 in which equation in the equation v okay so here i am having the graph of both equations and this is the actual solution of this system so basically this point of intersection is actually the desired point where our method should actually work so but now for the time being what we are going to do we substituted the value of x1 this is the x1 axis and this is the x2 axis we substituted x1 is equal to 0 in the equation v which is over here and then from here we determined the value of x2 okay in the first iteration then this value is actually substituted in the equation u and from here what we did we determined the value of x1 okay so this is basically x1 and for that i need to draw the projection on v y because we are going to substitute this value in this equation v from where we will get the value of again x1 uh, sorry x2 and then substitute this value in the equation u in order to get the value of x1 and you can clearly see that what is happening in this case we are actually diverging 
away from the solution okay we are we started from here we determine the value of x2 then value of x1 and in this way it is actually moving outward means moving away from the point of intersection since we started with the system that was not diagonally dominant now what happens if we actually make the system diagonally dominant and then start determining the value so now what I have done, I have actually switched these two equations for making the system diagonally dominant. How? Because if you look at the absolute value of the diagonal entry which is 11, then this magnitude is greater than the 9. Similarly, this is the second diagonal entry and its magnitude is greater than the off diagonal entry. So now the system has become diagonally dominant. Now in this case, I am going to determine the value of x1 from the v and the value of x2 is determined from the equation u all right so what we will do we will actually determine the value of x2 by substituting 0 from the equation u now all right so let's just do it over here and then this x2 value will be substituted in the equation v in order to get the value of x1 okay and then this value again will be substituted in the equation v to get the value of x1 then same like that you can clearly see that what we are going we are actually moving towards the point of intersection according to the Gauss-Seidel method which will ultimately converge and give us the actual solution of this system now you can apply the gross little method mathematically by following the same steps and verify your results. Thank you for watching.